Pakistan has a unique negotiating style that it has developed over the last 75 years. Its diplomats have used deception, guilt trips, and the lower hand to secure Islamabad's objectives on the world stage. Pakistan has used these tactics to ally with America, work with communist China, and take on India. Tactic 1. Use deception. Pakistan has used strategic deception to get what it wants out of allies. A case in point is Pakistan's alliance with the United States, which began for the first time in the 1950s. Pakistan needed weapons and economic aid to strengthen its position against its rival, India. However, it also needed financial and military support from Washington in order to do that. However, America was clear that it would not back an alliance aimed solely at India. So, Pakistan's diplomats, military, and politicians practiced strategic deception. They stated that Islamabad's objective was to aid America in its fight against global communism. This caught America's attention, since the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union that was raging at the time was its top foreign policy priority. If Pakistan was offering to fight the Soviets, then its value as an ally shot up. Despite suspicion in certain parts of the American government that Pakistan wasn't being entirely truthful about its intentions to Washington, Individuals like Secretary of State John Foster Dulles pushed through the alliance. In 1954, a defense pact was signed and the United States gave Pakistan $429 million over five years to equip five military divisions. After this success, Pakistan routinely employed strategic deception as a tactic to gain US military support for decades. Tactic 2. Leverage personal relationships. Pakistan's diplomats and its all-powerful military often leverage their personal relationships with foreign counterparts. They go out of their way to provide hospitality and cater to the personal whims of foreign counterparts in order to establish closer personal bonds. These bonds are then leveraged to secure Pakistan's strategic interests. For example, some of Pakistan's leaders like General Ayub Khan constantly played up their personal ties as bluff military men to appeal to American presidents like Eisenhower, who was himself a highly successful general. This closeness allowed Pakistan to forge a military partnership with America in 1954. Pakistan also maintained close ties with Richard Nixon. In 1967, Nixon was out of office after a series of political defeats. Despite this fact, Pakistan's leadership rolled out the red carpet for Nixon when he visited the country in 1967. The future American president didn't forget the gesture. And according to some US diplomats, Nixon returned the favor by backing a very favorable policy to Pakistan when he became president in 1969. He even stood by Pakistan during the 1971 war and provided assistance in its battle against India. By contrast, India doesn't follow this emphasis on close personal ties between politicians and officials on both sides. Indian diplomats are bound by protocol and often appear less friendly and direct than their Pakistani counterparts, according to scholar Christine Fair. Tactic 3. Pakistan uses weakness. Pakistan is infamous for using the lower hand, or weakness, to get what it wants in negotiations. Pakistan knows it is weaker than most of the countries it works with. It routinely cites its poverty and internal instability in negotiations to avoid doing what other countries want it to. In other cases, Pakistan can also demand support for its own policies from foreign governments. Islamabad's officials argue that if it doesn't get what it wants, the country could spiral into instability and chaos. As one scholar memorably put it, Pakistan puts a gun to its own head and threatens to pull the trigger. For example, Pakistan often refuses to take action against domestically based terror groups when asked to by foreign nations. Instead of taking down these threats, Pakistan argues that cracking down on these outfits will pose a destabilizing threat to the country, which is already racked by poverty and instability. This makes it hard for foreign countries to force Pakistan's hand. U.S. Ambassadors Howard and Teresita Schaefer, who have lots of experience in South Asia, call this tactic the art of the guilt trip. Tactic 4. Play up domestic opposition. Another favorite tactic for Pakistan's negotiators is to play up opposition from domestic constituencies. In their book, How Pakistan Negotiates with the United States, Howard and Teresita Schaefer point out that Pakistan's citizenry is generally hostile to the West and India. The country's citizens are also prone to believe wild conspiracy theories about the designs of foreign powers on Pakistan. These conspiracy theories are often amplified by domestic media, the army, and politicians. Using this hostility, Pakistan's leadership often refuses to comply with foreign demands, citing domestic opposition. For example, this was a tactic used by Pakistan when America asked it to provide support for America's war in Vietnam. 
Pakistan, despite being a former US ally, did not want to get involved in the Vietnam War and was able to cite widespread opposition to America amongst the general public to get out of its obligations to Washington. Pakistan's unique negotiating style offers key insights into how Islamabad sees itself and the world. For India, understanding just how Pakistan conducts itself at the negotiating table is key to securing its own interests and national security.